everybody, my name is Aisha Bedouin Ibe. I'm a tax leader here at PwC Ghana. Welcome to Tax Shorts. Today I'll be speaking with my colleague Alexander Fifi Yangson, who's a senior manager in our indirect tax team. And today we are talking about the EVAT invoicing system. So Alex, as I like to call you, you're welcome to today's discussion. Thank you, Aisha. So as we just start off, let's just go right in. What is the whole EVAT invoicing about? Okay, so the when it comes to the EVAT invoicing, um, the Ghana Revenue Authority, as, as we are aware, the Commissioner General, has been given the mandate to prescribe the form that tax invoices should take. Um, this is expressly provided in Section 41 of the VAT Act. Now, what has happened is that over time, since the VAT Act came into force, the Commissioner General has had this method of um, providing pre-printed hard copy VAT booklets from which taxpayers are allowed to issue their invoices. And then a few um, taxpayers are given a special dispensation through which they are able to issue their own system generated invoices. Now GRA is moving totally and Ghana is moving totally from the VAT pre-printed booklet into an electronic form of issuing tax invoices. And in this particular way, the idea is that for every invoice that is issued, the Revenue Authority will be able to get real-time information as to the details in terms of the amount of tax that is charged, what the transaction is about, and how much the transaction is going for. Great. So. Immediately, I say this is good news. Good news on the side of the GRA because, of course, they have access to the information in real time and there's transparency, but also for the taxpayer because then they don't have to write so much, spend so much time writing paper invoices, keeping paper records, and they can keep everything digitally, right? So this is good news. Yes, it is good news. Okay. Um, in addition to, to what you have already mentioned, mm -hmm. with the taxpayer going with the EVAT invoicing, certain disputes that taxpayers used to have with the revenue authority, such as um, where in cases where they couldn't find the original hard copy invoice, you know, the revenue authority saying that they cannot accept photocopies. This will be th hopefully be a thing of the past because with the KOL code and the security features of the EVAT invoicing, the authenticity of any invoice can easily be checked against GRA's own database. So some of the losses that taxpayers have made because they couldn't find original hard copy invoices will be a thing of the past. Okay, wonderful. So obviously this is the whole systems change. So I foresee a few challenges on the side of taxpayers and perhaps the GRA as well in terms of merging the systems. What do they have in place to deal with, with that? Okay, so first of all, GRA seem to have thought extensively about this. Um, so they have about four different models that a taxpayer can subscribe to and um, it depends on the nature of the taxpayer's business the level of complexity the frequency of billing of the taxpayer so whatever kind of business a taxpayer has there's a solution that uh, more or less would work for for the taxpayer so in doing that the gra has um, tried to anticipate the needs in addition to that GRA has a dedicated contact line um, where taxpayers who are having issues can contact them in addition to that, they've also put together a WhatsApp, dedicated WhatsApp number where taxpayers who are on the AVAT invoicing system um, but who are encountering challenges can easily reach out to the GRA to have their problems addressed. Okay, so it all sounds pretty comprehensive. A lot of planning and preparation has gone towards that, which is good news all around for everybody involved. What are some of the other key things you think people need to be aware of where this is concerned? Okay, so one of the key things people need to be aware of is that they have to immediately get on board. Mm. When the law was initially passed September last year, the timeline that was given was a whole year. And then after the year, if need be, um, a taxpayer could ask for an extension of up to three months. But that provision, which gave a year with an additional extension, has been taken out of the law. So every taxpayer has to immediately get in touch with the revenue authority and make sure that they are on the right side of the law. Failure to do that could attract certain sanctions to them. So let me get it right. So there's a, we have a year from September last year to September this year to get on board. So that was the initial, initial. law. Okay. But that provision of the law was amended in the last VAT Amendment Act. Okay. 
and that time frame has been taken out. So effectively, every taxpayer is required to get on board immediately. So there's no end date, deadline, grace period. It's immediate. It's immediate. I just want our viewers to be very clear on that. So it's immediate. Yes. All right. So everybody should just immediately talk to their local tax office and get on board as soon as possible. Yes. Okay. All right. So Alex, any other things you'd like people to keep in mind or maybe any next steps? What should people do now? What should taxpayers do now to move this forward as quickly as possible? Any practical tips would be very helpful. Okay, so to start with, it is good for taxpayers to get in touch with their tax office and then also to get their tax consultants if they have one involved because this will help them in making sure that they are doing the transition smoothly. In addition to that, you may need the, the taxpayer may need um, IT IT support depending on the model that they choose. Right. Because some of the models require uh, linking their ERP to the GRA system. Right. So depending on the model that the taxpayer chooses, the taxpayer may need IT support. So it's good for taxpayers to start the process early, so that they do not find themselves on the wrong side of the law. Okay. This is good because this is uh, VAT affects everybody and so it's a lot of change and I think we need to embrace that change to be on the right side of the law and to help our country move forward. Alex, thank you so much for that overview. It's been great talking to you. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say? Is there anything we are forgetting? This is a very important topic and I want us to be, to be leaving the right messages to our audience. Currently, maybe you may not have, you may not have gone uh, signed up to the EVAT invoicing system. But remember that in order to be able to claim input VAT, you need to have a valid tax invoice. To know that whether an, an invoice that you have received is valid, it needs to have a KRAU code that is provided from the certified the GRA certification. In addition to that, it will have a timestamp. It will also have an SDC signature, which is a 16 digit number. Um, alphanumeric um, signature separated by dashes. All these features go to authenticate the validity of the invoice that you are receiving. So when you receive an invoice from um, a supplier who says that they have been moved onto the certified invoicing system, make sure that you verify to see all these details or else you may risk um, having your input tax denied. Also, when you are in doubt, you can always scan the QR code and authenticate the validity of the invoice directly from the GRE's website. Okay, good to know. Great tips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. My name is Aisha Bedwe Ibe. I'm the tax leader here at PwC Ghana. And today I was joined by my colleague, Alexander Fifi Yangson, who's part of our indirect tax team. He's the senior manager in that team. And today we discussed the new EVAT invoicing system. Thank you for watching. See you on the next episode. God bless.